Well, good evening, everyone. I uh, hope that tonight finds you well. And uh, I just want to bring a little bit of an update. Uh, it's been a while since I've done this, but since the recent spike in the COVID cases and some of the things that are going on in uh, our area right now, I thought it might be a good time to do that. Well, uh, the good news is uh, we don't have any further restrictions than what we've already had. Uh, so uh, Joplin City Council uh, didn't uh, put, anything, put any other restrictions on, on our worship services. So that, that's a good thing uh, in, 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 and it can, how, however you wanna look at that, but uh, I'm, I'm glad because I was really wondering uh, about what was coming if we were going to have to change services again. But the good news is we are gonna be meeting this Sunday. Uh, kind of the bad news in this is that um, we're kind of going to have to change our mentality, I think, in a little bit of uh, a way. This isn't a sprint. And of course, the first few weeks and months felt like uh, maybe, you know, this thing would, would just kind of blow over and it would be out of the picture. But this is more like a marathon. And that's kind of way we're going to have to change our mindset and begin to treat this like a marathon rather than a sprint. And a uh, person who runs a marathon has to have a tough mentality. And so church, we're gonna have to have a tough mentality uh, because um, this isn't gonna be over in a day or two. Uh, we're gonna be dealing with this and the effects of this for quite some time. And uh, also the other um, things that are going on in the world too. Uh, we're going to be dealing with the effects of those things. So we've got to get a tough mentality, but not a hard mentality. There's a huge difference between being a hard people or just being a tough people. And we want to be uh, tough and we want to have the mentality that says, no matter how long this takes, hey, we're going to do this. We're well able. God has equipped us to do this and uh, we're going to be able to do it. So good news is we're having church on uh, Sunday morning and uh, no uh, new restrictions, but I do want to go back over <clears throat> some of the, uh, the restrictions and some of the things that uh, we'll be looking at. Uh, I want to cover about three things tonight. I want to cover this. I want to uh, talk about uh, Missions uh, Sunday and also just a little short uh, verse that I'd like to share as well too tonight. And so hopefully you can stay tuned in for just a few minutes and, and see it through. First off, uh, we're at 11 o'clock service on Sunday. The doors will open again at 1045. And that's so we can basically come straight in and, uh, and enjoy our time together and worship. And then basically we'll have to go straight out again. Still be the six foot social distancing that hasn't changed. A mask or no mask. Now that is your choice and we honor both choices. So if you want to wear a mask, we honor that choice and it would urge you to do so. And if you do not want to wear a mask, uh, we honor that choice as well. So uh, either way, uh, if you are uh, attending a mask or no mask, uh, it, it's, it's all good. And so we want you to know that and be, uh, be comfortable with what you're doing. Um, of course, again, there'll be no hugs or handshakes. I know that's hard. It's hard on me, hard on you guys. Um, and it's just something we'll have to do for a while longer yet. Uh, also, if uh, you have any symptoms at all, the CDC updated uh, some new symptoms they believe is early signs of the coronavirus and might do well to just go back and look at some of those things. You know, sometimes uh, people might think that, well, maybe if I'm having a stomach ache, well, that's one thing and I can, and I can come. But, but I think some of those updated um, conditions, uh, you might want to look at that. So look at that. But if you're feeling bad, man, don't come. Do yourself a favor. Do everyone else a favor. And just uh, be patient and, and come the next time. And uh, we trust that you'll stay healthy and well, and we all will. And so, uh, so anyway, if you're exhibiting any symptoms, be sure and, and stay at home. And uh, we, I think the thing that I want to say, too, about this is uh, let's stay grateful for what we do get to do and not be pining away for the things that we don't get to do. I think sometimes it's easy in life to 
always be wanting something else down the road rather than being happy and being content with what we have. And so, man, I know for me, it has helped a lot to have people in service and have people watching service because one of the things that uh, happens is I think the atmosphere is great. I like preaching in front of people, of course, instead of just a phone, but still, yeah, with the people who are online and the people who are, are in attendance in the building, yeah, I think it's going to give us an, ad, an atmosphere that, uh, that will help and the Holy Spirit will be able to move uh, whatever your decision is. If it's attending or if it's being cautious and staying home, hey, we support and we honor your decisions. And for those of you that are now joining us uh, live on the live streams, uh, man, that is fantastic. Or keeping up with us sometime even through the week. We appreciate uh, you coming alongside and we want to minister uh, best we can. We've got a wonderful variety of ministers that uh, minister at different times. And so we're thankful uh, to have all those capabilities, but we, we still have to get used to the fact that we're going to be doing some of this on streaming for uh, a while, and it's not going to uh, it's not going to change all that quick. But again, the good news is we are still having Sunday services, and uh, and so I'm thankful, really thankful for that. Uh, and uh, also the children's church on Sunday will be outdoors again. We're taking advantage of the summertime. It is summertime, and the kids need to see. Uh, and, and have fun and people need to enjoy their summertime. And so uh, the kids will be outside. So if you're a parent, make sure to, you know, uh, bring your kids and some stuff they can get wet in. I know at the end of Children's Church, uh, uh, they're having some water stuff, some water games and getting wet and just enjoying that. It looks like it's gonna be a beautiful weekend for that again too. So we thank God for that. We thank God for Haley and Kara who uh, don't mind uh, going outside and, and uh, enjoying the sunshine with the kids and enjoying the water with them. And, and we just, we're thankful that we have that in place right now. Uh, been visiting with Sean uh, about the youth. He has been doing a wonderful, him and Sarah have been doing a wonderful job keeping up with the youth and keeping uh, their service online. And, and that's an awesome thing. Uh, but again, I think uh, one of the things that happens is we do get screen fatigue. And, and I know that Sean and Sarah would like some hands-on with our uh, youth students. So if, if nothing changes, it looks like that we're going to be holding a youth service uh, on Wednesday nights here in the building. No, uh, we'll be streaming. They'll be having their service while we're streaming the main service. But uh, that works for Sean and Sarah, which uh, again, uh, some of us will have to bring our, our youth uh, and, and bring them to service, but uh, it'll be all right. And so anyway, uh, that's what's going on uh, in uh, our uh, immediate future. And, and one of the things that we want to do too is uh, begin to, and since I, I just really got the sense this morning that the Lord was saying, hey, you need to get back to some of the things that you were doing. So we're going to be uh, having some people uh, begin to post some encouraging things. We now have our website up, which is communitychapeljoplin.com. And uh, it's got links to YouTube for those that don't have Facebook or don't want Facebook, but have access to the internet. So uh, that's a good source for us now. And so we're going to be having some people uh, write some encouraging words again. We'll be having some of uh, the people who will uh, maybe uh, have a video devotion uh, along through the week just to keep us connected and built up. And uh, I apologize. I, uh, I've kind of been in this waiting mode for uh, a few weeks now where I've just kind of been waiting to see what was going to happen if we could kind of get back to normal sort of thing. We still are planning our VBS in July. And so we're looking forward to that, looking for a great time of that. And uh, if you'd like to help with that, uh, for sure get in touch with, with Haley or uh, myself, Kim, any of us, uh, of the staff can, can try to get you connected in that way. And so we're grateful uh, that we're getting to look forward to that. I think that's one of, been my, one of my frustrations lately. It's just, it's been hard to plan anything and see it through. And so we hope that uh, that's gonna be, uh, you know, nothing changes. Looks like BBS is on the schedule and on tap, and we're thankful for that. So also, this coming weekend is Mission Sunday, 
And on Mission Sunday, uh, we were a little late uh, out, of the, out of the gate on this this month. Usually we would be raising money for camp or kids going to camp and that sort of thing. But of course, that's not happening this year. So we decided to uh, move Gene Beaver up on the list uh, this, this year. Uh, he usually comes in August, but uh, he's uh, actually, uh, he's, he's pretty much quarantined uh, at, in Texas right now and, uh, and, and trying to run everything from Texas. So Gene, uh, of course, has been involved with I Am Ministries, which is International Assistance Ministries, I think for about 50 years, getting close to 50, I think. And uh, he, of course, he was the founder of it. Uh, went down to uh, Nicaragua and started there. He's been through wars and floods and earthquakes and things with those people and then also expanded into Honduras. And of course, uh, Gene's a good friend of our church, a good friend of Kim and mine. Uh, we have been on adventures with Gene. Kim, a really big adventure with Gene, but uh, we love Gene. But Gene told me uh, yesterday on the phone that he was going to be turning 80. I could not believe that he's going to be 80 years old. I said, and, and in one way that excited me really well because I thought, man, Gene's still able to do this at 80. But in another way, it kind of concerns me too. And, and just as a matter of prayer, church, we need to be praying for uh, younger people to hear the voice of God calling them into ministry. And that's one of the things that a lot of our youth camps do so well is they, uh, they allow the kids a service to, to really listen for the voice of God calling them into ministry. And uh, our, a lot of our missionaries are getting older and uh, man, we need to see a young ministers, young evangelists, young pastors, and uh, of course young missionaries raised up because we wanna see uh, the gospel just spread more and more as, uh, as we are in the end times of things. And so anyway, be, be in prayer uh, because again, Gene is nearing 80 years old. And uh, you know, I, I don't know that there is a successor yet. Maybe there is, I don't know. But uh, anyways, someone's gonna have to become the Gene Beavers uh, and, and those folks over the years. But he, uh, of course, is uh, his ministry area is Nicaragua and Honduras. And uh, Right now, I'll give you kind of the headlines, what's going on. Yeah. Honduras is under martial law. And according to Gene, there are a few people that can work, but that's a very few. The rest of the people are under a stay-at-home order, and they can only travel to the grocery store to get supplies, catch this, every 15 days. Now, I don't know about you, but I remember uh, back when I had money in my pocket and I couldn't buy some of the basic things like toilet paper and that sort of thing. But imagine being 15 days between visits. And Gene said this, he said, the thing about the 15 days is, is where are they getting the money to go to the store when they're 15 days, if they're not working, if they're not able to work, if they're not able to get out. Uh, and so it's a big concern for him. Uh, since they're under martial law, there's no coming and going, and so there's no church services. Uh, the pastors there are doing the very best that they can to uh, keep up with people uh, on by telephone, uh, by internet, some. Of course, uh, again, a lot of the regions there are mountainous or rural locations, and so it's difficult right now for the pastors. Uh, but Gene, what Gene foresees happening there is, and probably if you're giving in the, in the missions uh, offering this, uh, this coming week, uh, just know this, probably a portion of that at some point is going to go towards feeding people rather than a project of some kind. Typically we've given towards projects and Gene's used uh, the offerings we've given for projects, but this time he's, um, I believe that he's thinking, and, and from what he said, He'll, be, uh, he'll probably be needing to feed the people. So he's, he's made sure that there's, there's money there. He's coordinating everything. Uh, basically, uh, you know, we don't use that term apostle much in these days, but Gene's basically an apostle to that, those two regions because he, he's uh, established the churches. He's went down there and established the churches. He oversees those churches and guides them. And so 
and cares for them and protects them. And so uh, Gene's got a big load on his hand. And so anyways, be in prayer for, for them in Honduras. And uh, now in Nicaragua, it's a little bit different story. In Nicaragua, Gene said that uh, two of the elderly FGEA pastors have, have, have passed away due to the COVID-19 virus. And so uh, they were able to have service. They had a little bit more freedom there and they were having service. And um, Gene said basically he shut them down for a while because uh, that was their social time. And that's when they were all getting together, but they were spreading the virus uh, from person to person. It was just happening. Uh, it, it, was, it was at a great rate. And so they shut down the church services. So what the pastors are doing there is that they're basically going in a circuit and they are checking on the people. They're just going to the people's homes, making sure they have the necessities of life. And so uh, that's what's going on in Nicaragua. And, uh, and, and it's, a, uh, it's a big, <laughs> it's, it's a big deal. And so your gifts, uh, this uh, go around to uh, Gene Beaver and International Assistance Ministries, or I am, is going to be uh, very important uh, for that group uh, to have what they need in basic necessities. So I, I thank you for your giving. Many of you give monthly. Uh, and hey, if you're listening tonight and, uh, and you would like to uh, give to uh, Gene Beaver, uh, International Assistance Ministries, uh, you can do that through our church by going to Easy Tithe app or easytithe.com and looking up Community Chapel Joplin and there'll be a way that you can get on there and take a look, uh, go through the process, take a look, but there'll be a scroll down box and if it says monthly missions and you give in this month, that would go towards Gene Beaver and some of our people, and thank you for doing this, but some of you guys are monthly or yearly also supporters of Gene uh, and Anita as well. And so Gene sends his love. He, he hopes to get by here one day and be able to fellowship with us and we'll miss him being with us. So remember to pray for Gene. Last thing I wanna to do tonight is just look at a, a verse of scripture to encourage us. Uh, Romans 12, nine out of the NIV says this, love must be sincere, detest what is evil, cling to what is good. Just three things. And Romans chapter 12 is such a, such a great chapter. I mean, you know, it's, it's easy to say that about any chapter of the Bible, but Romans chapter 12 gives us some real uh, savvy advice about living life. And, and doing what is right before the Lord. And so this is one of the things in verse nine that, that, that it brings out. It says, and it, what caught my attention really is, is cling to what is good, but, but let's cover this verse. Love must be sincere. And, and sincere love can only flow from the power of the Holy Spirit into our lives. And that's how it'll flow out. <laughs> Insincere love, uh, which oftentimes, I've been guilty of. Uh, it's been it's been kind of uh, maybe uh, for show, but but here's the thing: we are capable of sincere love if we'll tap into the power of the Holy Spirit flowing into us and and out of us. See, sincere love is easy for those people who are lovely, or who uh, we are um, who we like who agree with us or are part of our families, and sometimes not so much in families, but, but, it, but, but sincere love has to flow from a deeper place. It can't be from just the human heart. It has to be from the human heart who has been born again and who, who's flowing in the presence of God and letting the Holy Spirit flow. So the only way, listen, folks, the only way we're going to be able to show sincere love and act out sincere love is from the Holy Spirit. So we, we have that mandate, let love be sincere, let it be sincere. So we have to know that to do that, we have to go back to the Lord and say, Lord, fill me, fill me, especially if we're honest with ourselves saying, you know, man, I, my love quotient is on the low side. And so Lord, fill me so that I can love sincerely. The Lord's good, church. 
and his desire is, is that we reach people during this long uh, marathon that we're running right now, and, and it's going to need to be with sincere love. Next thing, it says to test what is evil. If you're, um, notice this first, first to test what is evil, not who is evil. Now, I think we could all agree that we can detest the devil, Satan, the enemy of our souls. We can detest him. He is a spiritual being. He is uh, out of our, our touch uh, as far as physically, but uh, spiritually we war uh, against him. And, and thank God we have the tools to win that war. We can detest him, but too often times we need that. We hate people or we detest people rather than detesting the evil that works through people. And so folks, that's very important is that we detest evil. Detest it. Don't put up with it, don't like it. And, and again, that will prompt us back to spiritual warfare. Thank God that God has given us the help from above to win spiritual warfare. Then the next thing it says is cling to what is good. Well, I tell you what, that's important right now. There's so many things. I, I know just skimming headlines uh, on my phone sometimes, I look for headlines that um, give me a positive vibe. And boy, I'm telling you what, they're hard to find. And, and if I'm not careful and I, I look at those headlines, uh, I will begin to take on a hold of the negative instead of holding on what's good. And you know what? If you got your hands full of the wrong stuff, if your grip's full of that, I mean, no, you can't hold on to what's good. So here's the thing. We have to release what's evil, what's bad, what's not good. We have to release that. Let it go out of our hands. That's part of detesting it. It's just letting it go out of our hands so we can cling to what's good. Hang on like a, hang on, like a bulldog's jaw when they get set on something. We hang on. We dig our fingernails in, so to speak, and we hang on with, uh, I remember when my son was, my older son was little, they came out with a key, uh, uh, little uh, man called G.I. Joe with a Kung Fu grip, you know? And that's kind of what we need to hold on to the good, like a G.I. Joe with Kung Fu grip. And just, um, you know, man, meditate on those good things. You know, and, and that's the Word of God. And that's the things of God. And that's the great things that we can do together. So uh, let's, let's cling to what's good. And, and God help us in those things because we need his help in all those things, even to cling to what's good. So we love sincerely, we detest evil, and we cling to what is good. So hopefully this helps you know what's going on. So we'll be looking forward to church on Sunday. Uh, we'll be looking forward to some more uh, edifying things coming uh, across the uh, Facebook and on our uh, web page and YouTube channel that uh, you can uh, watch or you can read and and again a lot of you have done so much to write some of these words of encouragement and we're thankful for that uh, that we have so many that are well able to to do some of those things so if you would bow your heads with me for a word of prayer and then uh, We'll, uh, we'll uh, let you go tonight. I didn't want this to last forever, but uh, let's, uh, let's, let's pray. Father, thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Thank you, Lord, that it is possible for us to have sincere love. Lord, we, we ask you now, Holy Spirit, we ask you to come and fill us. Fill us to overflowing so that we can operate as you've designed for our love to be sincere. God, help us to test what is evil. But Lord, help us not to detest people, even when they do evil. Lord, help us to detest the evil, but not the people. Lord, help us to pray for them. And God, have a heart for them, because Lord, you're able to save anyone. And God, I pray, Father, Lord, that tonight we will take that to heart, to cling to what's good. And Lord, when we're looking at things and holding on to things that's not good, Father, we will let loose of those things so we can fill our hands with the good things. So God, we pray for Gene Beaver and as he leads Honduras and Nicaragua. God, I pray that you would empower him, strengthen him, and provide for him. 
And God, I pray for all our families tonight, and all the people that watch this, Lord, that you will provide for us. You'll protect us, Lord, from harm. And God, that you'll give to us uh, according to your riches and glory to meet our needs. And we give you thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless. Hope that you have a uh, wonderful uh, rest of your evening. And uh, we'll be uh, visiting with you again uh, in a day or two.